Hello everyone, my name is Morgan from Racer X Performance Tuning. Today we're going to be installing the Coil Unplug Kit from Revenge Performance. Well known for their transmission mastery on the 3000 GT and Stealth platforms, the folks at Revenge Performance also offer a Coil Unplug system specific for these cars. So why would you want to do this? There are a few distinct advantages. It will allow you to get rid of your aging PTU, as well as your coil pack and plug wires. Additionally, one of the major benefits of going to a coil unplug setup is that it will provide you with a stronger spark than you would have had with the stock setup, and even stronger than you might get with an ignition amplifier such as one from MSD. Most importantly, by using this system, you can move away from a waste spark ignition and move up to a sequential one. There are a lot of advantages to going sequential, but the one that I find most appealing is that it allows you to take advantage of knock per cylinder with an AEM, whereby you can address knock on a cylinder by cylinder basis. This will allow you to reduce timing and or add fuel in just the offending cell as opposed to reducing it globally in all of the cylinders. Overall, it's a fairly straightforward process, so let's take a look at it. For the teardown, our goal is to get access to all of our spark plugs and down here to the PTU and the wiring harness uh, that's down there below. So in order to do that, obviously we're going to remove any, any spark plug covers that we might have. We've got to take the plenum off so we can get to the spark plugs in the back. Uh, remove enough uh, intercooler piping to give us access, especially down in this area. And obviously we're going to need to get rid of or remove this um, uh, radiator, uh, upper radiator uh, hose so we can get down into here, which is our rear area that we're going to be doing our work. Okay, and first order of business, as always, for safety first, we're going to be removing the negative battery cable uh, terminal from our battery. Obviously, as we're going to be uh, working with 12-volt switched uh, power sources and also going to be uh, s mm, putting three wires into our ECU, we really don't want to have any, any power running to give us any risk while we're doing that. So once you've got your plenum removed, your intake piping and your... Um, radiator upper hose removed should be presented with something like this um, obviously you want to make sure you get some towels to cover up any access points and specifically you want to get a block off plate or a um, or some towels to cover your upper intake plenum we don't want anything falling down in there while we're doing this work so at the end of the day the objective is to have access to this area right here we can get our coil pack removed and then we're going to work on that PTU Okay, so once we've got our ignition wires removed from the coil pack, we can begin to address the coil pack removal and the PTU removal. Now, down below here, uh, there's a wiring harness that uh, snaps into the coil pack here. There's a press down tab on the top and one on the bottom. Just get your finger underneath there and you can pull that out. Then, when we get down to the PTU in a moment, there's two connections to it. One, and the one closest to the front of the car, is uh, actually the easy one to get out. And then the one on the other side technically has this wiring uh, hanger on the opposite side just to make it difficult uh, for you to get to. So maybe easiest to remove the whole PTU out of there, flip it over, and then remove that. Otherwise, you can push down with a little pick on both ends here which will remove that wire and then allow this to slide out. Back up on the coil pack there's at least three connections that are holding it together. There's this noise capacitor which is a screw here. You might have to get a vice grip in there to loosen it um, and then attach it from the other side. Uh, one bolt here in the front bracket and then another bolt over here hiding behind here right there. That should remove the coil pack. And then we get down to the PTU, which we probably could get out right now. There's two screws holding it down. One right there. Phillips screw and then another one hiding in between the coil pack here. Right there. Get those two out and it will slide right out. So as we're working on the, um, the coil pack, removing the 12 millimeter bolts from here and here uh, give us some access to some play here then uh, that'll allow you a little bit more opportunity to get to the uh, capacitor or noise capacitor screw that we're seeing right there you can get to the front or you can come around the back and uh, 
get a pair of vice grips in there and loosen that up from the back side. Then additionally, you'll notice obviously you've got a, a coolant line going to your front turbo here, and that's attached here. Underneath, there is a, I don't know if I can get in there, there's a 10 millimeter uh, bolt that's attaching your coil pack to this bracket here that holds to that coolant pipe. So getting those two out and you should be able to remove the coil pack at that point. Once you've got your uh, coolant line removed, or the bracket for the coolant line removed, and that uh, Kapesky condenser uh, capacitor bolt removed, then your coil pack will just come right out. And now you've got access to the PTU. Take those two Phillips screws out, and we should be able to flip it over and remove the, um, the other um, connector. Unscrew in the PTU from the um, from the engine, then we can remove this wiring harness very easily. And then we're going to flip it over, and here's where we see this little wire piece right here. I'm going to wedge that out with a pick, and then this guy will come out, and then our PTU is out. Once the PTU is removed, and we've uh, obviously removed both of the uh, harness wires uh, to the PTU. I'm going to take the tape and cut it down off of the um, wiring harness, give us more access to the wires here. You're going to want to take note of and probably leave a little bit of wire inside the, uh, the uh, connector when we cut it off. You want to note the colors and the stripes on those because some PTUs may be a little bit different than others, not sure. Actually, I think all the PTUs are the same, but your wiring may be different. So what you're going to need is the wire for the tachometer, the ground, an IB1, IB2, and IB3, those for those running uh, sequential obviously are going to go to the coils of cylinders 1, 2, and 3, whereas your uh, 4, 5, and 6 are going to run back to your AEM uh, ECU and, and wire directly into there. So it's important to note that. So we're going to get again the, uh, we can get a ground off of here, tachometer off of here. Everybody's got to tie into the tachometer, everybody can tie into the ground. And IB1, IB2, and IB3 for cylinders 1, 2, and 3. Then off of the, uh, the coil pack, we'll get a 12-volt switched power source from there, which we can line up for all six of the coils. Okay. If you haven't already, if, especially if you're running copper uh, spark plugs, this is the time that you can change them since you've got everything already undone. So go ahead and change those copper spark plugs. Then we're going to be removing uh, these three bolts, one two, three, and the same on the back side, one, two, and three, um, for my valve cover gaskets, take those out, because uh, we're going to use those and replace those with the, uh, with the bolts that come with the kit. Once you've got your spark plugs gapped and installed, then you can go about putting in the, uh, the coils and the uh, wiring connectors. I found that although the instructions say you can put the coils in first and then do the wiring connector afterward, um, sometimes it's a little bit of a tight space. So like I ran into a little bit of room up against my timing belt cover and then in the back, kind of here against the uh, throttle body. So I just go ahead, went ahead and um, installed all the wiring connectors first and then uh, installed the coils afterward. It seemed to work out pretty good. Uh, just make sure you follow the instructions so you have the right coil on the right cylinder with the right color coding. Um, if you make a mistake, it's not too bad. You could just take the whole thing out, the coil itself. Even if the uh, connector might be hard to unplug, as they say, just take the whole coil out. So next thing we're going to be doing is uh, wiring up the grounds, wiring up the power, and then wiring up three, number one, two, and three cylinder over here to our uh, original wiring harness from the PTU and then four, five, and six through the firewall into the ECU. Down at the ECU, which is probably your favorite crawl space to be in like me, you got to uh, unplug uh, the third uh, from the top of the uh, harness connectors, connections. And then uh, here, you're going to be pinning in or connecting your wires for if you have a uh, second gen, it's going to be number 53, 56, and 62. 53 is going to be the third from the top here. And uh, 
uh, 56 is in the upper right hand corner and 62 in the lower right hand corner you'll notice that uh, 56 and 62 already have wires in them but they're not being used by the uh, by the AEM ECU so you can leverage those wires uh, but for 53 you're going to need to pin that one as it's an empty spot if you're running the first gen then that's going to be pins uh, 82 85 and 91 uh, they're going to be in the same corresponding positions obviously just different numbers because of the uh, the uh, wiring harness differences between the models All right, you get those wired up that's going to cover cylinders four five and six and you're almost ready now on your am tuner software we're going to be making modifications to four tabs uh, the first one is the uh, coils and injectors tab what we're going to be doing here is going to be moving over from our waste spark setup uh, to the sequential setup. So from the injector side of things, everything really here is just going to stay exactly the way it was. Every, all six are active. All six are tied to knock sensor number one, assuming you're only running one knock sensor. And uh, all of them are getting their O2 feedback from your, um, from your first O2 sensor, which would be your wideband. The injector types, um, these actually should be set to primary. And uh, by default, they all seem to come in as uh, base, um, but uh, AEM recommends that these should be primary. Now, down below in the coils is the main section where we're making most of our changes. Here, in the waste spark setup, you're seeing coil 1 and 1B, 2 and 2B, 3 and 3B, uh, which identify with the firing uh, that's happening in the waste spark setup. So the first thing you're going to be doing is getting rid of coils 1B, 2B, and 3B. You're going to turn on coils 4, 5, and 6, all again tied to the same knock sensor. All should be leading. The next thing you need to do is you need to copy over this phasing information. So where you had um, on coil 4, you need to be running 4.141. Uh, Let's get this cleaned up here. Coil 5, we'll run uh, 5.141, and coil 6, we'll run uh, 6.141. Right. Once you've got all that set up, then you're basically taking care of your uh, sequential firing of your coils on the coils and injectors tab. Next, we'll tune over to the coil dwell tab. Now here, uh, in order to increase the life of the coils, Revenge Performance recommends running only slightly more dwell than is needed. So the settings that you're seeing here and on the installation page at Revenge Performance are similar to Denzel's recommendations. So you're going to want to set these up uh, similar to this. All right, so now moving over to our knock tab, this is where we'll be able to take advantage of our sequential setup. Obviously, in your, your knock sensor cow, you should have established, or you will be establishing your knock floor. Uh, this is the established line for how much noise is acceptable noise as we run through the RPM range. Um, and you, you would do this by way of making several runs uh, with your ignition timing turned down and you're, you know, you're um, running under wastegate pressure just to uh, avoid any, any damage situations. But uh, do that multiple times and start to evaluate what your common and typical noise is like within your cylinders. Um, and that's how you establish your knock floor. So now anything that's gonna to get above these values is gonna be an indication to you that you have some knock going on. So uh, under knock control options, obviously your knock control is on, and now you get to take advantage of knock per cylinder so you can turn that on. So what does that give us the options now? So speaking of this, this knock floor that we created, and you'll go out and make some more runs now. And when you're looking at your data in the AM data, you'll be able to see if one particular, um, one particular cylinder is, is noisy in a particular RPM range um, under boost, then that may be an indication that uh, there may be an issue with that particular cell. It may be just particularly a noisy cell in and of itself, and it might not be an indication of knock. Um, but in the past, all that you could do is turn down ignition timing and possibly add some more fuel in that area and that was going to affect all of your cylinders all at the same time so the advantage here that you have with sequential is that now let's say you're, you're finding that you're, you're getting some 
some noisiness in maybe it's just in coil number, uh, say coil number three at about 6,400 RPM. So what you can do is you can go in there from 6,400 RPM and just, you know, maybe take it all the way up to the end there and uh, just do a add, uh, say, minus uh, three degrees. And we'll take off three degrees there um, in that particular cell during that particular range. You can go make another run or two and see if this affects things. If it does, then great, and you don't have to make any further adjustments. Uh, if not, there may be some further investigations to do. So this is how you can manage ignition trims. You can also uh, um, do the same thing with injector trims. So if you're of a mindset that you want to add a little bit more fuel, you can do the same thing again in that same uh, range and just say we're going to uh, maybe um, offset this by a percentage and add in uh, maybe 3% more fuel uh, during that time. And so that will uh, also attempt to address the, uh, the knock that you were seeing. So that's it. That's how you're going to wrap things up in AEM and then uh, ready to go up and fire up your engine and uh, enjoy your new sequential coil unplug kit from Revenge Performance. Uh, one quick correction. When I was showing you the coil dwell tab uh, previously, that was from a different tune, uh, from a waste spark tune that I had. So actually this uh, screenshot right here accurately reflects the, the dwell settings that you want to have um, for these Denso um, coils. And again, this information is also listed on the uh, Revenge Performance Installation Guide, so um, you'll be able to reference it there as well. Now, back in the driver's seat, after checking for any vacuum or boost leaks, next you're going to make sure that all your sensors are still operating correctly. Uh, you might need to also recheck your throttle range wizard, especially if you disconnected and reconnected your throttle cable. So now we'll turn the key and fire things up. warmed up you want to want to slowly bring up the RPMs uh, verify that everything is working as expected so you've got good vacuum we're running a little bit rich that'll settle down fuel pressure is good and temperature will slowly rise up and there you have it now you have a much hotter spark on your ignition knocked by cylinder control, and you've got a little revenge on your ride. Thanks everybody, and have a great day.